Okay, uh, so we're picking up exercise 17-7B, so here are the facts. We've got an investment in three different stocks. These, this investment is classified, these investments are classified as trading security. Uh, what we're asked to do is prepare the, the fair value adjustment at the end of December, at December 31st, 2014. In 2015, one of the stocks was sold, the Lorton Corp stock. We're asked to prepare the journal entry to record the sale of that stock. It was sold for $33,200 per the facts of the problem here. And then at the end of 2015, December 31st, 2015, we're asked to again repair, uh, prepare the securities uh, or the fair value adjustment. So, here we are. So all I've done here is summarize here on a separate page the same facts that were presented on the prior page here, here, and they were presented verbally there. So what we've got is we've got a total cost of securities of 172,000 on December 31st, 2014, and those securities have a fair value of 180,000. So we've got an $8,000 excess of fair market value over cost. The securities are appreciated. Uh, of course, we know that the balance in the investment account, which always includes, reflects the cost of the security, is going to have a balance of 172000 1231-2004. Again, the Lorton stock was sold during 2015, so it, there are no numbers there for it. And, in the 2015 column, uh, the cost for the JAK and the Libby stock simply carry over from prior year. The securities, though, now have a different value. Total value, of the uh, total cost of the, of the securities that we own at December 31st, 2015, is 141,000. Total fair market value of those securities is 143,000. So at December 31st, 2015, we've got. $2,000 excess of fair market value of the cost for our investment securities. Basic facts. So, at December 31st, 24, we need to establish a balance in the fair value adjustment account of $8,000 so that the balance in that account, when added to the balance in the investment account, $172,000, those two amounts together total to equal the fair market value of the securities, which is 180000 So the entry then is debit the fair value adjustment, $8,000, and credit the unrealized holding gain or loss dash income account for $8,000. When we prepare that journal entry, that's going to bring the balance of that fair value adjustment account up to $8,000, which is what we need. Now, because these securities are classified as trading securities, this unrealized holding gain or loss account is identified as an income statement account. And that $8,000, in this case, gain, reflecting the increase in value of the securities that occurred during the year, that $8,000 gain is actually going to run through the company's 2014 income statement. Separate line item on the income statement unrealized holding gain or loss on trading securities, $8,000. And that's what this part of the overhead says. Um, on the other hand, if these securities would be classified as available for sale securities and not trading securities, this account would have been, the credit side of the entry would have gone to unrealized holding gain or loss dash equity, which of course would have been part of accumulated other comprehensive income reported in the equity section of the balance sheet. In other words, that unrealized holding gain, in this case, would bypass the income statement and go directly to the equity section of the balance sheet if these securities were classified as available for sale. They're not, though, in fact, the problem they're classified as trading securities, so that $8,000 gain goes directly to the income statement. Okay, the facts of the problem tell us that in 2015, we sold the Lorton stock here for $33,200. So the entry that we would make to book that sale, of course, 
would be debit cash for the amount of cash that we receive here. Credit the investment in trading security asset account for the amount of the cost of the Lorton stock that was sold, which is embedded in that investment in trading security account. That cost amount that's embedded in the investment in trading security account is $31,000. So we're going to remove the cost of the Lorton stock from the investment in trading security account by crediting that account. And then the excess of the sales price for cash received from the sale over the cost of that security, $2,200, is going to go as a credit to gain on sale of securities. This is a plain old gain account just like you read and studied and dealt with throughout your, your accounting curriculum. It's analogous to you know the sort of gain that you get, for example, when you sell property plant equipment. Nothing, nothing new. It is a realized gain. And it's reported on the income statement. So we've got a $2,200 component of net income in 2015 that is arising because we realized this gain on the sale of the Lorton Company stock. Now, the last thing we're asked to do on the problem is prepare the security fair value adjustment at December 31st, 25. So at December 31st, 25, we've only got two securities. The aggregate cost of those securities is $141,000. That's the balance in the investment in the trading security account. And the fair market value of those securities is $143,000. So we've got a $2,000 excess of fair market value over the cost of our investment securities. And that is the desired balance in the securities fair value adjustment account right there. That's the desired balance. Now, the current balance in that account is the balance that carried over from last year, which was $8,000. So the security fair value adjustment account began the year with an $8,000 balance. We want to adjust it down to $2,000. Question, how much is the entry and what's the entry? The answer, of course, is that we're going to credit that account $6,000. There's the credit entry to the security fair value adjustment account. And then the offset to that credit, a debit, is going to go to the unrealized holding gain loss dash income account. Uh, so that will bring the desired balance, the, the actual balance in the account from what it currently is, 8,000 down to the desired balance of 2,000. And as a byproduct of making that entry, <coughs> we're going to report uh, essentially a holding loss on the income statement to the $26,000.